Hello BookTube, I have a book haul for you today. Um, I finally indulged myself and ordered several uh, 20th century American plays. Um, I've mentioned several times over the course of this year that I've been really wanting to add more uh, 20th century American drama to my collection. I'd started off with just mid-century American drama, but I've gradually moved to 20th century American drama. Uh, a few weeks ago, I put in an order with Powell's, the great, glorious bookstore in Portland, Oregon, and the package finally arrived. So, let's get going. First up, and in alphabetical order, because I've already logged these books into my catalog while I was loading up the latest episode of my 2024 library tour, which is was perhaps I should have waited until uh, a few months down the line to do a 2024 library tour. I'll talk a bit more about that um, with weekly reads tomorrow. But let's get on with the book haul, which perhaps, again, would be a lot of ice. But when I ordered these books, I did not know. So let's get going. So, first up is Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by Edward Albee. Uh, Twelve times a week, answered Yuta Hagen, when asked how often she'd like to play Martha in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. In the same way, audiences and critics alike could not get enough of Edward Albee's masterful play. A dark comedy, it portrays husband and wife, George and Martha, in a searing night of dangerous fun and games. By the evening's end, a stunning, almost unbearable revelation provides a climax that has shocked audiences for years. With the play's razor-sharp dialogue and stripping away of social pretense, Newsweek rightly foresaw Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf as a brilliantly original work of art, an excoriating theatrical experience surging with shocks of recognition and dramatic fire that will be igniting Broadway for some time to come. I actually picked up my first copy of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf from a bookstore in Portland, Oregon, when I was there in 2006. Um, it was not at Powell's. It was actually, I went walking around downtown Portland and came across a um, hole-in-the-wall bookstore, popped in and picked up a copy of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. It was a similar uh, mass market paperback, but the cover was black. Anyway, moving on to uh, the next play, uh, Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hensbury. First produced in 1959, A Raisin in the Sun was awarded the New York Drama Critics Circle Award and held as a watershed in American drama. Not only a pioneering work by an African-American playwright, Lorraine Hansberry's play was also a radically new representation of black life, resolutely authentic, fiercely unsentimental, and unflinching in its vision of what happens to people whose dreams are constantly deferred. In her portrait of an embattled Chicago family, Hensbury anticipated issues that range from generational clashes to the civil rights and women's movements. She also posed the essential questions about identity, justice, and moral responsibility at the heart of these great struggles. The result is an American classic. Um, it's been far too long since I last read A Raisin in the Sun. Um, probably 20 years or more. Next up is a play that is new to me. Um, two of the plays in this grouping are new to me that I haven't read before. The rest of them are would be rereads when I get around to them. So the first of the new to me's would be Long Day's Journey Into Night by Eugene O'Neill. In this play, written in 1940 and released in 1956 after his death, Eugene O'Neill turns to the loneliest and most entangled of subjects, an unflinching portrayal in a time of acute psychological stress of himself and those closest to him. He had long been haunted, as he says in his dedication, by this play of old sorrow, and he could bring himself to deal with it only in the medium to which he had devoted his full creative powers. 
It is a somber and moving drama, and its writing was an act of magnificent courage. After performance in Sweden and on Broadway, it has been seen all over the world and has now been made into a film. I also picked up two works of Tennessee Williams. Um, first step is The Glass Menagerie, which it has been a long time since I last read this. Um, no play in the modern theater has so captured the imagination and heart of the American public as Tennessee Williams' The Glass Menagerie. As Williams' the first popular success, it launched the brilliant, if somewhat controversial, career of our preeminent lyric playwright. Since its premiere in Chicago in 1944, with the legendary Laurette Taylor in the role of Amanda, Menagerie has been the bravura piece for great actresses from Jessica Tandy to Joanne Woodward, and as it's studied and performed in classrooms and theaters around the world. So yeah, I read it in... I want to say in the classroom, I think I was a junior in high school when I read it. Um, this is not necessarily one of my favorite Tennessee Williams plays, but I picked it up largely because, as I mentioned a few months ago, I'm sorely tempted to pick up the Library of America Tennessee Williams omnibus collection. And I wanted to see if I would want all of his work, or if I just want to cherry pick the ones that I really most enjoy. Although it would be helpful if I could find a copy of Sweet Bird of Youth. Anyway, moving on to the other Tennessee Williams I picked up, which is one that I really enjoy. It, it is The Night of the Iguana, uh, which has been about 20 years since I read, over 20 years since I read it. Um, in night and uh, the night of the iguana, also made into an unforgettable film by John Huston, is Williams' robust and persuasive plea for endurance and resistance in the face of human suffering. The earthy widow Maxine runs a hotel on a Mexican cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean, where the defrocked Reverend Shannon, his tour group of ladies from a West Texas women's college, the self-described New England spinster Hannah and her 97-year-old grandfather, the world's oldest living and practicing poet, a family of grotesque Nazi vacationers, and an iguana tied by its throat to the veranda all find themselves assembled for a rainy and turbulent night. So I read this not for class. Um, my uh, The library at my college... Um, had the um, a longer sort of omnibus collection of Williams's plays. Uh, I think it's called the Theater of Tennessee Williams, and so I would occasionally check one out. And I read Night of the Iguana, Sweet Bird of Youth. Again, I would like a copy of, um, and several other plays. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to rereading the Night of the Iguana. And finally, the last of um, these plays I bought, and the second of two that I have not read before, is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom by August Wilson. The time is 1927. The place is a run-down recording studio in Chicago. Ma Rainey, the legendary blues singer, is due to arrive with her entourage to cut new sides of old favorites. Waiting for her are her black musician Sidemen, the white owner of the record company and her white manager. What goes down in the session to come is more than music. It is a riveting portrayal of black rage, of racism, of the self-hate that racism breeds, and of racial racial exploitation. So, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, The Night of the Iguana. The Glass Menagerie, Long Day's Journey into Night, A Raisin in the Sun, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? 
So yes, quite happy I indulged myself. So anyway, BookTube, I will be back uh, tomorrow with weekly reads. So until then, thank you, have a great afternoon, and stay safe.